Tori D. Adler. Here. John W. Alden Sr. Here. John William Alden II. Here. Savannah Rose Alden. Here. John P. Almeida. Here. Matthew D. Aquaro. Gene G. Argento. Here. Michael P. Armstrong. Here. Ingrid M. Berry. William J. Bill Bates Jr. Here. Janet L. Bennett. Maureen A. Bernard, Louis J. Bernazzani, Anna Flynn Bertini, Antonio G. Betancourt, Richard M. Betancourt Jr., Tenley Page Bevins, Cheryl A. Billings, John W. Billings, Richard A. Bolduck, William E. Bradstreet, Amy Butler, Alice Marie Campbell, Joan L. Chain, Christine J. Cheatham, Lawrence P. Chisholm, Jennifer L. Churchill, James M. Simon, yeah. Kathleen L. Simon, <clears throat> Peter E. Clement, Matthew P. Cacciati, Annette Y. Collins, Claire T. Conway, Robert F. Cummings, Jr., Priscilla W. Curta, Glenn M. Dagley, Andrea J. Daly, Douglas P. Daly, Charles C. Dame, Jr., Peter G. Davikas II., Christopher J. Dembowski, Jean N. Dempsey, Dutrochet J. Doiko, Timothy T. Donahue, John W. Duffel III, Matthew E. Duggan, Wayne H. Eisenhower, Colleen Lynch Eldridge, James S. Evans, John P. Philip Farmer, is that a yes? Thank you. N Natalie Luca Fiore, Linda J. D. Flaherty, William F. Foey, yeah. David A. Fraser, yeah. Arthur J. Francis, yeah. Daniel A. Gagnon, yeah. Ronald A. Gagnon, yeah. Robert A. Gamer, yeah. Janet L. Gargan, yeah. Daniel J. Gary Jr., yeah. Joan M. George, yeah. Edward J. Gibbons, yeah. Timothy J. Gray, yeah. Ryan P. Griffiths, Dana Michael Hagen, Mark C. Hannon, Marion E. Hazel, Jamie Smith Henry, William K. Hersey, Cheryl James, John L. Jaworski, Mark Mead Jones, David Kennison, Carla E. King, Elizabeth F. Clem, Theodore Contos, Mary Ann G. Kowalski, Sandra A. Sandy Lane, Elizabeth E. LaPointe, Rebecca Sims Lee, Ellen M. LaFaver, Charles L. Lincecum, Daniel E. Mackey, Vincent J. Mackey, Donner M. Martin, Charles A. Martins, Michael Matvichuk, Alan D. McCarriston, Sharon C. McMahon, Nancy A. McNulty, Paul A. McNulty, Eric R. Madricki, Roberta A. Mercier, Mark B. Mazina, Nelson F. Morin, yeah. James V. Morose, yeah. Michael E. Morris, Karen J. Nelson, yeah. William L. Nicholson, Ross Nizieski, yeah. Deborah K. Nicolini, yeah. Richard J. Parker, yeah. Joyce P. Pawanski, Michael W. Powers, Roger A. Powers, yeah. William M. Prentice, yeah. Nancy R. Purcell, Michael James Randall, Kenneth B. Reardon, Kevin T. Rourke, W. Coley Rybicki, Nova D. Semidai, Deborah F. Sauer, Thomas M. Savage, Kenneth G. Scholes, Jr., James M. Sears, Peter Z. Shabowitz, Sonia M. Schaffeville, Arthur P. Scamius, Charles Z. Smith, Kerry C. Smith Hulian, George H. Snow, Elizabeth Lisa Stockman, Richard D. Stoney, Richard A. Stoney, Robert Sullivan, Peter H. Swift, Ralph E. Swift, <coughs> Eldon Peter Swindell, Bruce A. Sims, Jackson Tingle, Carol Tingle, 
Candace R. Typert, Here. Monica L. Typert, Here. Richard B. Trask, Kathleen Turcott, James P. Tutko, Here. Josephine M. Uminski, Here. Alan Weeks, Peter J. Wilson, Here. Kevin T. Wood, Here. John S. Savalia, Here. Mark M. Barrett, Gardner S. Trask III, Here. Daniel C. Bennett, Here. William H. Clark Jr., Here. Diane M. Langlace, David A. Mills. Is there anyone that's a late arrival? Chris Dembowski. Thank you. And do you see this gentleman over here? Do you want to stand up? Ryan Griffith. Any others? One hundred and twenty one members stating their presence. I now declare the presence of a quorum. Uh, next, we will swear in the newly elected or reelected town meeting members, and I would ask those members to please stand to take the oath. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me I and your name. Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as a town meeting member according to the best of my abilities and understanding agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution and the laws of this Commonwealth so help me God congratulations congratulations I'd like to now invite our veterans to join me on the stage to lead us in the salute to the flag. Before we begin the salute, I would like to take this moment to uh, introduce these gentlemen. We have Steve Godzik, United States Air Force, Vietnam. Bruce Sweeter, United States Navy, Vietnam. Jim Simon, United States Navy, Army National Guard, Iraq. Peter Mirandi, United States Coast Guard, Vietnam, era. Larry Call, United States Army, retired. And Alan Weeks, United States Navy, Vietnam. I would invite everybody to please take their seats. Our entertainment this evening is one of the contemporary a cappella groups from Danvers High School. 
This academic year, they performed at over 30 events at school and across the North Shore on their way to a performance in Orlando, Florida in early May. In June, they will finish, record, uh, will finish recording their third album with the Danvers High School A Capella program, which will be released in December. Tonight, the group looks forward to performing two original songs they spent the spring semester writing and refining together. They are led by Alex Grover, choral director at Danvers High School. Please join me in welcoming Falcon Eyes. Hello everyone, we are Falcon Eyes. Uh, I'm Mike Mahoney and as you just heard, our second semester this year, we spent writing and composing three songs. And so we're gonna perform two of them tonight. The first one is the one that we all did all together, Chase and Tides.
Hello, everybody. My name is Sam Patterson, and as Mike said, that was Chasing Tides, which was our original song that we wrote together as a group. One of the main reasons why we wrote these songs was because one of our two original songs was written and arranged by our very own Hannah Kelsey, who will be going to college next coming fall for songwriting. So without further ado, here is Game of Waiting, featuring E.J. Barasevich on solo.
will now come to order. The chair would like to offer a special welcome to um, some folks that are joining us for their first annual town meeting. Rodney Conley, the finance director, Clinton Allen, the assistant utility director, uh, David Fields, director of planning and development, Jamie Colon, assistant town accountant, um, and wish you all um, Godspeed. <laughs> the chair would also like to recognize our state representative, Ted Spiliotis, in the back. And the chair would like to send the warm wishes of the entire body uh, to Bill Nicholson as he is recovering from surgery. Bill, I know you're watching from home. And last but not least, I would like to recognize um, Susan Fletcher uh, from our planning department. This is Sue's last town meeting before she retires. Sue, stand and be recognized, please. Best wishes, Sue. I'd like to now recognize the chair of the Board of Selectmen to uh, provide us with the memorial resolution. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Moderator. <clears throat> Excuse me. Resolution in memoriam, May 20th, 2019. Whereas the town meeting body of the town of Danvers has learned with regret of the deaths of the following officials, employees, and volunteers of the town of Danvers during the past year. Sandra Holmes, retired on hospital. Maureen B. Kingsley, former school employee and poll worker. John W. Duffel, Jr., retired firefighter, town meeting member. Kendra J. Bethum, retired school department. Dwight W. Gates, former town meeting member. Stephen A. Williamson, former school committee member. Bertram A. Russell, Jr., Retired police officer. Elizabeth L. Andrews, retired and hospital. Robert A. Zipko, former teacher, Danvers High School. Grace P. Negro Deegan, former administrative assistant. Sandra Lee B. Parent, retired Hunt Hospital. Ruth A. Deverin, former teacher, Wadsworth School. Nancy J. Fitzgerald, former Administrative Secretary, Danvers High School. Joseph P. Santarella, retired Fire Department. Patrick H. Chapham, Assistant Librarian, Peabody Institute Library. Barbara E. Damon, former Town Meeting Member, Danvers High Athletic Coach. Claudia L. Snow, former Crossing Guard. Gladys Betancourt, retired MIS Department. Earl W. Clay, Retired teacher, school administrator. Jean Louise Campbell Thrower, retired administration, Danvers High School, poll worker. Whereas the terms of office or employment are truly dedicated public servants, exercise authority and fulfilling, fulfilled responsibility with great dignity, sincerity of purpose, and knowledge of public affairs, and whereas all of these individuals contributed greatly to the welfare of the town of Danvers, Therefore, be it resolved that, the, that these resolutions be spread upon the records of the town meeting of our town of Danvers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do all members have a copy of the warrant articles and the recommendations of the Finance Committee? I will now appoint tellers for each precinct. <clears throat> One, Nelson Morin. Two, John Jaworski. Three, Joan George. Four, Bill Bates. Five, Charlie Dane, six, Larry Chisholm, seven, Mark Zuberick, and eight, Dan Geary. Tellers should be certain to count their own votes, and the teller from Precinct 1 should be sure to count the votes of the members of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you.
For the benefit of new members, as well as others, the chair will review some matters of information and instruction relative to the conduct of this meeting, most of, most of which are procedural. The chair will read each article or a summary thereof aloud, which will be followed by the recommendation of the Finance Committee. The recommendation of the Finance Committee is the main motion. Town meeting members shall usually speak on all motions before any others. However, any citizen voter in the town will be permitted to speak after town meeting members have done so. As is tradition, all members addressing the body are asked to use the microphone. In special circumstances, the chair may permit a committee chairperson or the sponsor of an article or some other person such as town council to speak before others for the purpose of information or other explanation. The meeting, if it wishes, may change the order of discussion of articles in the warrant by majority vote. The chair reminds all present that no person may speak without permission of the chair and that no speaker may be interrupted except for a point of order or privilege. All questions addressed to any other person present must go through the chair. Neither cross-examination nor reference to personalities will be permitted. They are out of order. The chair retains the authority at all times to rule certain questions and comments irrelevant to the meeting. Direct controversy between speakers are an affront to the dignity of the town meeting and will not be tolerated. All proposed amendments must be in writing with a copy given to the town clerk. The reason for this is purely for the sake of clarity, so that we all know what we are voting for or against and in order that a main motion after amendment can be clearly stated by the chair prior to voting. I thank the members who have given me prior notice of possible amendments. Specific procedures concerning uh, voting. The chair will from time to time recite specific requirements for votes on certain motions. As a reminder, in June 1998, the town meeting voted to adopt Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 39, Section 15, to authorize the moderators to declare adoption without count any vote requiring a two-thirds vote. Most of our vote is conducted on a voice vote basis. If the chair has doubt of the result of a voice vote, the chair will ask for a standing vote. Standing votes are taken by precinct, with each precinct teller reading and reciting aloud his or her tally of those in favor, those opposed. The total vote precinct is then announced by the chair. If seven members rising in place indicate they have doubt, the chair will ask for a standing vote. After the chair has made the announcement, the vote may not be questioned. Roll call voting. A roll call vote may be taken on any motion when the following conditions have been met. A motion must be made for a roll call vote at the conclusion of debate or after a voice vote has been taken. The motion must be seconded. The passage of the motion for the roll call requires a majority vote. A motion for a roll call vote may not be made after a standing vote has been taken and the result announced by the chair. Interruption of any method of voting will be considered out of order. The chair requests that all persons with cell phones or other electronic devices kindly place the device in silent mode or turn it off. As always, no smoking is permitted on school grounds. I would like to also call your attention to the location of the emergency exits, which are clearly marked on, and on either, either side of the room in front and rear. The chair asks for the cooperation of those citizens who are not town meeting members to refrain from taking part in voice voting. This year, uh, we will have a special town meeting within the annual town meeting. This, uh, we will briefly recess the annual town meeting for the purpose of conducting the special town meeting. And once the business of the special town meeting is concluded, we will reconvene the annual town meeting. The return of the warrant indicates it was properly served. There is a motion by Chairman Trask that the chair omit the reading of the warrant, which has been seconded by Selectman Mills. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the motion carries. There is a motion by Selectman Bennett, seconded by member Linda Flaherty, that the annual town meeting be in temporary recess so a special town meeting consisting of three articles may be held. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. The return of the warrant indicates it was properly served. There is a motion by Selectman Clark that the chair omit the reading of the warranted, which has been seconded by Selectman Langlays. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The, the motion carries. Let's now please go to the special town meeting warrant. which is on page one of your booklet. 
Article 1, unpaid bills. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the payment of certain unpaid bills for previous years or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate a sum for the payment of certain unpaid bills for, previous, for the previous year as follows. $649 from DPW mileage reimbursement to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. And, and Mr. Chairman, I'd ask that you move the microphone closer to you because I, I don't think you're getting, your voice is getting picked up very clearly. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 2, um, meeting members, you'll note that there have been some changes um, and the, uh, there is an addendum uh, which you should have received with your badge. Article 2, budget transfers, fiscal 2019, to see if the town will vote to amend the actions taken under Article 2 of the May 21st, 2018 annual town meeting by adding certain appropriations or by reducing certain appropriations by transfer among accounts, by transfer from prior appropriation on articles or from available funds or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to amend the actions taken under Article 2 of the May 21st, 2018 annual town meeting by adding certain appropriations or by reducing certain appropriations by transfer among accounts, by transfer from prior appropriations under articles or from available funds as follows. $175,000 from police salaries wages to employee health insurance, $20,000 from fire tuition reimbursement to fire salaries and wages, $9,000 from IT salaries and wages to human resources salaries and wages, $7,000 from IT salaries and wages to recreation salaries and wages, $2,500 from assessing salaries and wages to accounting salaries and wages, $13,000 from IT salaries and wages to inspectional services salaries and wages, $15,000 from department head salaries and wages to accounting auditing services, $7,000 from department head salaries and wages to human resources salaries and wages, $115,000 from water salaries and wages to water pump maintenance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 3, State Public Works Grant, to see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the public works projects, such sum to be reimbursed by the State Transportation Bond Bill or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate, appropriate $894,936 for public works projects, such sum to be reimbursed by the State Transportation Bond Bill. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, there is now a motion by Member Sharon McManus, seconded by Member Claire Conway, that the special town meeting be dissolved. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. The moderator declares the recess open, and we will now proceed to the annual town meeting warrant, which is on page three. Article one, election of officers to choose such officers that, that are required by law to be chosen in the months of April, May, and June annually if they have not been elected by written ballot at the annual election or take any other action thereon. Uh, Mr. Chairman uh, of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I offer the following nominations for town officers. Field driver, William Hobart Clark, Jr. Pound keeper, Peter M. Morandi. Measure of wooden bark and weigher of coals, Richard Maloney. Fence viewers, Stephen King and Eric Richard. River Committee, Matthew Byrne, Daniel DiLorenzo, William Fui, Joan George, Louis George, Eileen Labby, Robert P. Moore, William Nicholson, Christopher Sanborn, ex officio. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 2, Budget, Fiscal 2020, to determine what sums of money the town will vote to appropriate to defray the charges and expenses of the town for fiscal year 2020 and to ter determine whether the money so appropriated shall be provided by taxation, by appropriation from available funds, or by borrowing 
or take any other action thereon. And Mr. Chairman, I would ask you to read the general um, recommendation, please. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate sums of money as set forth on the following pages to defray the charges and expenses of the town for fiscal year 2020. Thank you. Mr. Zubrick? Thank you, Madam, uh, Madam uh, Moderator. I appreciate the time that you're allowing me. But can't hear him. Can't hear me? You can't hear me? Yeah. Whoa. Is this on? Yeah, it's on. I'll speak louder. My comments before we vote on this budget and the budgets that we voted in the past, this budget represents our next year's tax payments. Basically, whatever we vote tonight is going to be reflected in our next year's tax uh, payment. This budget is balanced to the letter because we have the revenue and we have the expenses that we are planning to incur. However, this budget is bloated to accumulate free cash and in the past five, four or five years, we've been accumulating four to seven million dollars a year as free cash. And free cash is a misnomer. It's not free cash, it's left over from the budgets that have been authorized by us as the town meeting. Most revenue line items are up. And as you know, I studied the budget, I know the budget inside out, but most lines have increased. We have increased our tax collection because that's going up by two and a half, three percent. Our state revenue is coming up. Our receipts for licenses and permits is over a million dollars. And this is a subject that we'll be discussing later. The budget is well managed, except in this year's budget, what I've noticed is that every department and every salary line has increased, and increased significantly, in some cases, 6%, 7%. So I just want to make you aware that this is, this is what's happening, and when we vote this budget, and I was just told uh, coming in that we'll vote $121 million in 10 minutes, and spend it all. The receipts for the budget is not the problem. The spending is the problem. We're spending more than what we should be. There's no consideration for the taxpayer. The taxpayer becomes, like I've used for the electric company, a cash cow. We are the taxpayers. We represent all the taxpayers in this town. The one thing that we need to do is town meeting members were elected to represent the taxpayers. And we're really the end of the line for the taxpayers of what they're going to pay in starting in uh, July or August. So my position on the budget is that it is bloated and it is intentionally bloated to attain the maximum tax receipts from you and me. Maybe it's, it's a plan and, and it's a policy that's been established a few years back that we can gather more of the tax money and put it in savings, which is fine. But the problem is, is that we need to start considering the taxpayers in this town the taxpayers are getting to become a cash cow for spending in this town. My position on the budget is well known, and I will cast a no vote for each line item that's going to be voted now in the next 10 minutes where we spend $121 million. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Zubrick. Uh, we will now turn to um, the budget 
as you know, we vote by line item. You will find that beginning on uh, Roman numeral four of your booklet. Education, Mr. Chairman. Total and net appropriation, $42,317,094. Mr. Billings. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I'd like to offer an amendment to the recommendation. Um, submitted to you, it reads, the Danvers Town Meeting votes to appropriate $42,217,094 to the elected school committee and school administration for the operation of the schools and FY 2020. Second. So there's been a motion and a second. You may proceed, Mr. Billings. I appreciate it. For those who don't know me, my name is Jack Billings from uh, Precinct 5. And having been on the town meeting for more than 25 years, speaking briefly on occasion, I've never, ever stood to amend the Finance Committee recommendations. I stand this evening and speak for one reason and one reason only. I wish for our children a competitive education, making each student college or career ready. I wish for academic excellence equal to that seen in our sports programs and our theater music programs. Just eight months ago, an article was published in local media, quote, Holton Richmond to get state assistance. Continuing with the quote, this school, Danvers Middle School, is down to the 14th percentile. And now, by legislative mandate, the Department of Secondary and Elementary Education are co-collaborators to help us create and implement a template to target areas in need of improvement. The Danvers School Committee presented its FY20 operational budget to the Finance Committee. In the formal presentation, there were two quick assertions. Mr. Skarmis offered a vast majority of the $1.22 million budgetary increase is contractual obligations. Little for our children, programs, innovation. Dr. Lisa Daner electively offered that for, quote, for many years, all of the years that I've been superintendent, actually, our students have performed consistently just below state average. When the Finance Committee began its query, member Sally Calhoun turned to a proposed and published action plan. She was troubled by a goal within that plan. I was equally troubled. An electively asserted and majority voted goal by the school committee was that 60% of eight-year-olds within the district will read at above or minimal proficiency as determined by annual tests. Stated conversely, the school committee had just presented a goal seeking that if they achieve it, results in 40% of our eight-year-olds not reading at minimal proficiency. My doctorate is in language and literacy acquisition. And the uncontested research indicates a child that cannot read for their own learning or for personal fluency by age eight will struggle to read for the rest of their lives and are at academic risk. Town meeting member Andrea Daly, a retired educator, laid out a series of challenging facts for the Finance Committee. An example. Ten years ago, the school committee gave consent to a progressive math curricula called Investigations. In the ten subsequent years since implementation, Danvers mathematics scores have dropped. Then I offered ten comparative measures. 
each easily obtained from the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education website. I compared us to eight other like communities, including Linfield, Georgetown, and our neighbors in Beverly. The data indicated Danvers is outperformed in SAT scores, PSAT scores, percentage of students enrolling in AP placement, percentage in students passing AP placement, percentage of students attending four-year colleges, and percentages of students graduating from our high school. In response to my data, Mr. Crane offered, quote, some students recently competed in a New York Times hosted activity and been, had, had been specifically complimented, and some of our students attend some of the finest colleges and universities across the country. But there is no critical query. For example, what percent of our students attend the finest college and universities, and how does that compare to like districts? Do they persist and complete their degrees? Why do more than 60% of our eight-year-olds fail to demonstrate minimal proficient reading skills? Why, when studying the same curricular and taking the same criterion reference tests as statewide peers, do our middle schoolers rank at the 14th percentile? Why have mathematics scores dropped consistently? In a highly competitive world, I fear our district has been at an edge of a precipice and teetering for too long. Now, I sense we are actively falling behind. I want a school committee and a school administration that first recognizes that there may be a problem and then demonstrates a willingness to look at the problem and consider change. On behalf of our children, is that too much to ask? Please, on behalf of the children of our town, use your legislative authority to compel the question, what is the state of our schools, and are we satisfied with the answer? If the school committee requires the modest $100,000 to balance their end of year budget, they can request an appropriation just as we did before the town meeting next year. I offer my sincerest thanks for your time and serious consideration on behalf of our children. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the proposed amendment? Richard Parker, Precinct 4. I'm confused. Are, is the request to increase the budget or decrease no, the budget? No, it is a request to reduce the budget by $100,000. Okay, thank you. Mr. Zubrick? I think, and then correct me if I'm wrong, Jack, uh, but the $100,000 is to be held in abeyance to fund the budget after a resolution of the challenge of our students. Our education system in this town is very important. And the quality of our students that come out is important. However, what I've been experienced and I've heard from other individuals is that a lot of our students that go on to college, spend your $50,000 or $100,000 for a secondary education, which is basically the first year is a repeat of the high school years because they haven't learned it there. So I think the intent of this thing is to challenge the school committee and the superintendent to provide a plan of how they're going to improve and excel and challenge the students. 
What, what I heard at that same finance committee meeting that Mr. Billings was talking about is that we have reached 51% and that's good enough for us. It's not good enough. The school committee needs to challenge our educated, to educate our kids to a higher level. I, as you heard earlier, I'm, I'm a uh, study of uh, the budgets, but take a look at what we're spending on our education right now. We're asking for $42.3 million for the school committee controlled budget. We're also, Essex North Shore or Essex Tech is charging us $2.5 million for 100 students. We're also municipal contribution to the maintenance of the schools and the facilities is $19 million, and it was 18 last year. And we're approaching $75 million out of the 121 that we're going to approve right now. So I think the message here is challenge our schools and our school committee to improve and provide the appropriate level of education so our students can shine in the college years. We're forcing all of our kids to go to college. And it's costing you and me 70, 50 to $70,000 a year for the first year, which is a repeat of the high school education. So I urge you to consider this uh, amendment very seriously. All it is is just a uh, message across the bow. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Mr. Scamius. Mr. Betancourt, I'd ask you to take a seat, please. You haven't been called to speak, so I'd, I'd ask you to take a seat. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, Arthur Scamius, Precinct 4, uh, School Committee member. Um, a couple of things. First of all, relative to the budget process, um, I, think, I think most of you will know this, but, but the budget process is something that has been going on for several months, as it does every year. It's been carefully planned out by the administration in conjunction with the town. We've, uh, we've had our own hearing, to which nobody came and objected. We went to the Board of Selectmen, uh, which, who were all in favor of our budget. We were approved at the FinCom. Uh, this is not something that, uh, that we have uh, taken lightly, nor do we ever take it lightly. It's something that we're very, very careful about. We always have been, and we're also cognizant of the town, and, and we don't want to, uh, uh, we want to provide what we should be providing, and we don't want to take more than we need to as part of the budget. We actually are, uh, per pupil, are under the state average as far as our spending is concerned. Secondly, relative to Mr. Billings' statements, uh, much of it I would disagree with. Much of it, much of what he said tonight, I would, I would state is either not correct or out of context. Uh, but we can't, we can't debate the school's performance at this town meeting. We're talking about the budget. What I would suggest, though, what I, what I would invite all of you to do is take a look at the 40-plus hours of school committee meetings we've had over the past year. Take a look at what we've talked about. Take a look at what we've said. Uh, we did have a, a, an MCAS score that we weren't happy with at the middle school, okay? And take a look at what we talked about at the school committee meetings about what we're doing and how serious how serious the administration and the Holton Richmond administration is about taking that on and making sure that they take care of that as best as they can without overdoing the focus on the MCAS, because we don't want to do that. But we, we, we saw it, we're dealing with it. And again, take a look at the four or five hours from a meeting back in October, from a meeting of, uh, uh, back in November, and also from the meeting we just had a month ago or a week ago. Um, take a look at all of it. Take your time to read all of the things that we have online about what we're doing uh, in, in, in the school system, what, what we're doing to make things better. We know that we're never where we want to be, and nor is anybody where they want to be. We're always trying to move ahead and move, move forward, and we're always going to do that. But again, before anybody wants to take issue with what we're doing, go take a look at all of those school committee meetings. Go, go watch them. They're on DCAD. You can see them all, every single one of them. Go read all the stuff that's online on our webpage, and then come back and tell me you know, what you think. And I'm happy, and we're all happy, to listen and do, do try to deal with those issues. But my point right here, right now, is 
this is not an arbitrary thing what what mr billings has suggested is basically to punish us and that's what he wants i would sincerely hope that you would reject that thank you thank you is there further discussion mr betancourt Uh, Rick Betancourt, Precinct 5. <clears throat> really quickly, I just wanted to say that I think what Dr. Billings had just brought up and articulated was uh, pretty accurate as far as I'm concerned. I've actually seen some of the similar studies that he's found, and I would agree. I fully support your, your recommendation for reduction of budget. We, we consistently see a 3 to 3.6 percent increase in our budget every year for our school administrator, for our school budget, yet we're not, at least my daughter and, and, and conversations that I've had with students and parents that have actually called me in Precinct 5, they feel that we should be able to do a little bit of a better job, um, especially some of our special ed kids are having some really d tough difficulties in there with getting the services that they require. So I, I think, Dr. Billings, I think, thank you very much for bringing that up. I'm going to vote in favor with you, sir. It's about time that we at least get it on the board to start discussing it for future plans. So uh, well done, sir. Thank you. Is there further discussion on the proposed amendment? We will now turn to voting on the amendment. The amendment requests an appropriation of $42,217,094 to the elected school committee and school administration for the operations of schools in FY 2020. All those in favor of Mr. Billings' amendment, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion does not carry. We will now turn to the main motion, which is the Finance Committee recommendation of $42,317,094. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Next line item, moderator, Mr. Chairman. Total and net appropriation, $1,550. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Selectman. Total and net appropriation, $23,800. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please, nope, oh, nope, oh, I'm sorry. While I don't wish to could propose you, an amendment for this If year's I could meeting. interrupt you, sir, oh. I'd, I'd like you to introduce yourself, please. I apologize. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I'm Tim Donahue from Precinct 4. Um, while I don't want to propose an amendment to this meeting, I would like us to consider next year's meeting. Um, being a selectman in this, in this town is a thankless job. These folks put in quite a few hours um, in trying to do what's best for this town. We have the ability to increase what we con how we compensate them. And next year, I would like to consider a uh, consider doing such. Uh, that's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Finance Committee Reserve. Total and net appropriation, $125,000. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Legal. Total and net appropriation, $131,423. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Department head. Total and net appropriation, $1,321,060. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Management. Total and net appropriation, $315,486. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Information technology. Total and net appropriation, $527,386. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Accounting. Total and net appropriation, $446,932. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Assessing. 
Total appropriation, $453,742. From taxation, $408,742. From overlay reserve, $45,000. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Administrative services. Total and net appropriation, $585,000. $481. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Human resources. Total and net appropriation, $150,761. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Police department and dispatch. Total and net appropriation, $6,753,029. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Fire Department. Total and net appropriation, $5,236,951. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. DPW tax supported. Total appropriation eleven million three hundred and sixty four thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars. Eleven million three hundred and four thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars from taxation, sixty thousand dollars from lateral and particular sewers. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Land use and community services. Total and net appropriation. $1,233,832. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Recreation Department. Total and net appropriation, $924,161. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Inspectional services. Total and net appropriation, $528,342. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. The library, PBD Institute. Total and net appropriation, $1,471,333. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. <coughs> Debt service. Total appropriation, $6,897,171. $4,208,693,000 from taxation. $300,000 from overlay reserve. $35,000 from slip, fee slip fees. And $2 $353,478 from construction stabilization. Is there any discussion? This requires a two-thirds vote as we are spending stabilization funds. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Benefits and insurance. Total and net appropriation, $14,471,261. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Retirement tax supported. Total and net appropriation, $6,648,817. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Capital outlay. Total appropriation from free cash, $596,000. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Sewer Enterprise Fund. Total appropriation from free cash, $6,161,376. Excuse me, that was from sewer receipts. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, water Enterprise Fund. Total appropriation from water receipts, $8,300,354. Is 
Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. We now turn to Article 3, Electric Division Budget, to see if the town will vote to appropriate for the Electric Division the income from the sale of electricity to private consumers, electricity supplied to municipal buildings for municipal power, electricity supplied for streetlights and jobbing during the current fiscal year, the whole to be expended under the direction and control of the town manager for the expense of the plant for the said fiscal year, as defined by Section 57 of Chapter 162 of the Massachusetts General Laws and to determine whether said income shall exceed said expenses for said fiscal year or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate for the electric division the un income from the sale of electricity to private consumers, electricity to supplied to municipal buildings for municipal power, electricity supplied for street lights and jobbing during current fiscal year, the whole to be expended under the direction and control of the town manager for the expense of the plant for said fiscal year as defined by section 57 of chapter 164 of the Mass General Laws and to determine whether said income shall exceed said expense for said fiscal year. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 4, Essex North Shore Agricultural and Technical School District Assessment to see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the payment of the assessment certified by the Essex North Shore Agricultural and Technical School District or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $2,507,152 from taxation to pay the certified assessment from the Essex North Shore Agricultural and Technical School District. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 5, authorization of the collector of taxes to act. To see if the town will vote to authorize the collector of taxes to use all means of collecting taxes, which a town treasurer may use when appointed collector of taxes, permissible under the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to authorize the collector of taxes to use all means of collecting taxes, which a town treasurer may use when appointed collector of taxes, permissible under the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 6, amend exemption percentage to see if the town will vote to amend the additional real estate, real estate tax exemption granted unto Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 59, Section 5C and a half to taxpayers who are granted personal exemptions on their domiciles under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 59, Section 5, including certain blind persons, veterans, surviving spouses and seniors to an additional exemption of up to 100% of the personal exemption to be effective for exemptions granted for any fiscal year beginning on or after July 1st, 2019, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to amend the additional real estate tax exemption granted under Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5, C and a half to taxpayers who are granted personal exemptions on their domiciles under Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5, including certain blind persons, veterans, surviving spouses, and seniors to an additional exemption of up to 100% of the personal exemption to be effective for exemptions granted for any fiscal year beginning on or after July 1st, 2019. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 7, amend senior citizen uh, property tax work off program to see if the town will vote to amend the senior citizen tax work off program adopted under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 59, Section 5K, by increasing the abatement to $1,500, the new maximum amount currently allowed by law for seniors who participate in the program to be effective for any fiscal year beginning on or after July 1st, 2019, 2019 or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to amend the Senior Citizen Tax Workoff Program adopted under Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5K by increasing the abatement to $1,500, the new maximum amount currently allowed by law for seniors who participate in the program to be effective for any fiscal year beginning on or after July 1st, 2019. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. <coughs> Any opposed? 
The motion carries. Article 8, committee reports. To see if the town will vote to hear, consider and accept the reports of the town board, commissions, officers, committees, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to hear, consider, and accept the reports of the town boards, commissions, officers, and committees. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Mr. Zubrick. This is more of a question. Is this the report that we received at the uh, special town meeting? Or is there going to be one issued imminently? Mr. Chairman, I, I believe that it's given out at the beginning of the year. Mr. Chairman? It was the one that was presented at the special town meeting. Okay. There's not going to be a follow-up until the next Great. iterations. The, the only other question that I have is are these reports available to non-town meeting members and where they can be found? Because people have asked me the question, you got your report, where's mine? So they are presented online in the Town of Danvers website. So they have to go online, there are none available in Town Hall. We print them because of the cost, because we are all cognizant of cost. We print them for the town meeting members. They are expensive. Uh, if someone comes to town hall and requests one, we will try to accommodate that request if Thank we you. have copies already available. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 9, modification to Brentwood Circle right of way to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to abandon and release to abutting property owners cul-de-sac all rights, title, and interest granted to the town as part of the approval of the original Brentwood Circle subdivision or take any other action in relation thereto. And the chair um, calls your attention to the addendum, uh, which you received uh, due to a typographical error. Um, this, um, this language uh, was left out. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to abandon and release to the abutting property owners cul-de-sac all rights, title, and interest granted to the town as part of the approval of the original Brentwood Circle subdivision, as shown on the plan on file with the town clerk, and to convey all rights, title, and interest in the fee in the turnaround to the abutting property owner at 28 Brentwood Circle. We further recommend that all costs relating to this conveyance be borne by the abutting property owners including but not limited to legal fees, appraisals, land costs, engineering plan, recording fees, et cetera. Thank you. Is there any discussion? This requires a two-thirds vote as it is the transfer of land. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 10, <laughs> amendment to town bylaw building permit fee structure to see if the town will vote to amend. Chapter 9A, entitled Building Permit Section 1, A and B, by adding the language which appears below, or take any other action thereon. And again, um, I refer you to the addendum that you received. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to amend Chapter 9A, entitled Building Permits Section 1A and B, by adding the language which appears on page 5 of your warrant. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. <coughs> Article 11, Amendment to Town Bylaw Certificate of Inspection Fee Structures to see if the town will vote to amend uh, Chapter 9B, replacing the existing language with what follows or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to amend Chapter, chapter 9B by replacing what previously appeared on pages 13 and 14 of the town zoning bylaw with the table that appears on page six of the warrant. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 12, technology plan, to see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the purchase and installation of hardware and software for telecommunication, computers, and related networking equipment for various town departments or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $338,570, $240,000 from free cash, 
thousand five hundred and seventy dollars from prior year savings technology plan articles for the purchase and installation of hardware and software for telecommunications computers and related networking equipment for various town departments thank you mr chairman is there any discussion mr zubrick I have a two-part comment and question. Basically, this technology plan has been in a warrant article for the last 10, 15 years. Should this become a line item in the budget for the IT department? Because this is a continuing amount of dollars that we're authorizing, and I don't know why we're authorizing it. Mr. Chairman? Uh, moderator, the part of the town manager, please. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Mr. Chairman, as, as, as Tommy Meeting Member Zubrick mentioned, this has been in the warrant for many years. Um, these, are these are mostly one-time one expenses, so we generally try to match operating expenses in the operating budget related to ongoing licenses and fees or salaries and things of that nature. Um, when we're talking about replacing network switches in schools or town buildings to the tune of thirty to forty thousand dollars, we generally, historically, have put those in the warrant for town meeting to consider as part of this uh, evening, um, in large part so that they're identified. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I would like to request that maybe this should be put into the budget because <clears throat> that's where it really belongs. It's a constant uh, request for funds, and those are. Uh, materials or equipment that depletes in time and it's uh, you know the the life of that equipment is probably uh five years maybe maximum but that's that's another story that we're going to have to be talking about but um, my other question is is for some reason and maybe i'm just being very uh, paranoid here but i'm seeing that the funding for this $338,000 is from free cash and from last year's Warren articles, leftover money of 98570 I don't believe we used to do that in the past, and I'm just wondering whether this is something that we should be doing because the Warren article is expired. Basically, it was used last year and that money should be returned as free cash, similar to what we do with the budgets. So th you're referencing the 98570? Correct. Mr. Chairman? Madam Moderator, Madam Moderator. Mr. Chairman, Madam Moderator, uh, there are actually four articles in this warrant that, um, that do uh, what, what Mr. Zubrick is describing. Uh, these are articles that had been previously appropriated by, by town meeting. Um, the savings reference here is not just last year's town meeting. Um, I would, I would refer town meeting members to pages 26 and 27 in your warrant books, and you'll see the current warrant balances for all of the previously appropriated warrant articles. Uh, there are a number of articles uh, this year where, uh, due to some savings in prior year projects being completed, uh, and given that the free cash number was down significantly this year, uh, when, we, when the Board of Selectmen and the FinCom were considering uh, the request to maintain services, um, in order to complete the Sort of the minimum projects that were identified as critical, it's being funded through a combination of free cash this year and the prior uh, warrant ball balances. Mr. Zubrick is correct. This money could have been released back to free cash and then appropriated, um, but in this case, we had the funds in uh, warrant balances that had been previously appropriated by town meeting. So this is appropriating it out of a capital account uh, to, uh, to fund a, a, a new project, essentially, from savings. Thank you. So what I understand is this is a shortcut to uh, returning the warrant article money from last warrant article, whether it was the last year or the year before that. But then this is technically, that's not what we've been doing in the past. That's all, that's why I'm asking the question. Is this something new that has been allowed by law or is this uh, some practice that's going to continue from now on? Mr. Chairman? The budget is prepared and decided within the confines of the law. Thank you. That, that wasn't my question. The question was the... Okay, let's, let's not get into an argument, gentlemen. The question, Madam Moderator, is 
is this going to be the technical reversal of last year's Warren articles and put into this year's Warren article? Because that, that's what we're doing. And that's not what we've been doing in the past. Uh, we will consider utilizing this methodology on a year-to-year -year basis. The effect is a, the same. If it were to go back to free cash and then be appropriated completely out of free cash, the same effort would happen and the same numbers would happen. So, so this is a, this is a methodology we may, on a case-by-case -case basis, utilize. Thank you. So this is a shortcut that's been implemented. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 13, disaster recovery. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the purchase and installation of hardware and software related to disaster recovery and business continuity needs or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $100,000. $30,000 from free cash, $70,000 from prior year savings, radio infrastructure project, which was Article 11 of the annual town meeting on May 21st, 2018, for the purchase and installation of hardware and software related to a disaster recovery and business continuity needs. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 14, school transportation vehicles, to see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the second year of a three-year lease for one 77 passenger school bus or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $30,000 from free cash for the second year of a three-year lease for one 77-passenger school bus. Thank you. Is there any discussion? This requires a two-thirds vote as it is a lease. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 15, new single-story building at 7 Canal Street. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the design, permitting, construction, and services during construction and the expansion of space at 7 Canal Street to house the Water and Sewer Division and to see whether said appropriation should be raised by borrowing or otherwise or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $475,000 from sewer retained earnings for the design, permitting, construction, and services during construction and expansion of space at 7 Canal Street to house the Water and Sewer Division. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Mr. Zubrick. As you know, I have been attending the Water and Sewer Commission meetings as a resident. And last year's proposal at that time was supposedly within budget. Then the town manager made a political decision to move the contaminated dirt from Plains Park to Canal Street, which obstructed the construction of the office building. This complex of the Canal Street uh, garage has been an issue for the last three years. First was the purchase price. Purchase price was granted by the town meeting. Then last year, there was a, another appropriation for another $300,000 for the roof repairs, which was supposed to be included in the appropriation for buying and uh, enhancing the buildings that they need. Now, the facility is fine, but the office building at the meetings that I've attended was always over budget. That whole complex was at $5.4 million at one time. Last year, the budget, the proposal was within budget, and it was great. They were going to have their office building and, uh, you know, build it out. But then we had this contaminated dirt to deal with. So I don't understand how a project that was within budget, which was just over a million dollars, 
has gone up $475,000 in one shot. And I'll just give you an uh, example of what I've been told is when the budget was being prepared for that uh, office building, don't worry about it, we'll get it from town meeting. This is another way of getting additional funds from the sewer and, and uh, water uh, ratepayers for something that should never have happened. So $475,000, I, I don't buy that at all. So I, I don't know. This, this is, this is un, unheard of. I mean, we're just escalating the cost for uh, a larger building, probably. The scope supposedly wasn't going to change, and it has changed. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Article 16, pavement management and sidewalk improvements. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the implementation of the pa pavement management program, including consulting services, computer programs, crack ceiling, sidewalk improvements, and the reconstruction of town ways, and to determine whether this appropriation should be raised by borrowing or otherwise, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $255,000 from free, free cash for the implementation of a pavement management program, including consulting services, computer programs, crack ceilings, sidewalk improvements, and the construction of town ways. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Alan McHarrison, Precinct 7. I just have one question regarding uh, the pavement and roadways. Is it, our, is it the town's responsibility to maintain uh, the streets entering and leaving the Liberty Tree Ball? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> it is not the town's responsibility. That is private way. Uh, the town has been in contact with Simon Malls, and they have a pavement re program that they're initiating shortly. But it is not town property. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 17, road layout and acceptance of public ways. To see if the town will vote to approve the layout and acceptance plans to accept certain roads as public ways and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by gift, purchase, or taking, or otherwise, any fee easement or any or, or other interest in any easement related to such public ways or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appro approve the layout and acceptance plans to accept certain roads as public ways and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by gift, purchase, taking or otherwise, any fee, easement, or other interest in any easement related to such public ways. We further recommend that the Board of Selectmen be authorized to take by eminent domain, acquire by purchase, or as otherwise may be necessary to acquire the land and easements necessary for said layouts. Inasmuch as these roadways have been maintained by the Town of Danvers as public ways, we do not recommend any damage awards under this warrant article request. Thank you. Is there any discussion? This requires a two-thirds vote as it involves acquiring land. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 18, rail trail expansion planning. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the continued development of preliminary plans for the proposed shared use trail to Middleton or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $10,000 from free cash for the continued development of preliminary plans for the proposed shared use trail to Middleton. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Tim Donahue, Precinct 4. Um, I want to call back to last year. Uh, was the very first year we had allocated public fundings to the rail trail project. Um, up until that point, it had been entirely privately funding, funded. Um, it was my understanding that that would be a one-time and one-time only contribution, and this year we're being asked for more. Uh, I just don't feel it's appropriate for us to continue to publicly fund this when it's been so su successful as a privately funded matter. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion?
Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, that is uh, pretty much not true. Um, <clears throat> we have heard that in the past that there'd never be any public funds. Um, we have put that to bed. This money will be used in the hopes of getting a state grant. We're adding it to the money to get a bigger grant. Um, this extension, and I think we've all used the rail trail, is something that we're continuously asked for. We don't go fast enough getting it done. But this money is used for, in the hopes of getting a bigger grant. And uh, I, I will never say that we won't come back and ask you for more money. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Article 19, Regional Shuttle Service, to see what sum the town will vote to appropriate as its contribution to a grant-supported regional <laughs> shuttle service from Beverly Depot to the Cherry Hill Business Park in Danvers or take any other action thereon. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $15,000 from free cash as its contribution to a grant-supported regional shuttle service from Beverly Depot to the Cherry Hill Business Park in Danvers. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Mr. Zubrick. Thank you, Madam, Madam Moderator. Uh, this article is a foot into public transportation for the business community. Uh, it is a grant from the state, and our funding is minimal. However, my question is, is what's next? Are we going to provide private bus service from Beverly Railroad Station to Cherry Hill Park or uh, any other area? The, the reason I'm asking is because this typically is something that is funded by private sector businesses. If they have need for labor to come in on a MBTA, like say in Boston, I've experienced that myself. Boston used to uh, you know, get people to Braintree and we used to have to have a private bus that brought our employees to our organization. And, and the question I have here, and I don't think it's been ever asked is, What's next? What else are we going to be funding? This is similar to the discussion we just had in regard to the rail trail. Uh, it, it becomes a tax-funded operation. And, and this is great that we got the grant, but what's next? Can anybody answer that? Is that a rhetorical question or you want? No, that's a real question. Okay. Mr. Chairman, what is next? <laughs> Madam Moderator, it looks like Article 20 is next. <laughs> but it's missing? I couldn't resist. The, the town of Danvers and the city of Beverly partnered uh, to apply for a grant from the state. It was a $125,000 grant. Um, the intent here is to fund a two-year pilot shuttle. One of the <clears> biggest <throat> concerns we hear every time we talk about zoning and development is traffic. And the city of Beverly is no different. So for, a, for, as you described, a minimal investment, it's a chance to see if this works. Um, we have no interest in operating shuttle services. It won't be for the benefit of one business. The, the intent here is that the coming, it would stop at the coming center and make its way out to Cherry Hill, where it would uh, potentially service a number of Beverly and, and Danvers businesses, all of whom would be expected to make a contribution that would be greater than what the town and the city are, are contributing. But, uh, the, Madam Moderator, through you, are there expected to be further investment in this by the town of Danvers in next two years, like you said? There would be a, there would be a, if, if, if year one is a success, there would be a second $15,000 contribution requested in year two. If the shuttle's a failure, then both the town and the city would, would abandon the idea. But it's, a, it's an opportunity to see if this works. And, and what I'm hearing, and if I may, what I'm hearing is that we do not have any intent of being the operator of that uh, operation of getting people from Beverly into Danvers into Cherry Hill Park. Well, the, the managers and the mayors on the North Shore, as well as you know, Aaron Henry and his staff uh, and, and his counterparts in the cities are looking at a variety of ideas for ways to move people around the region because it's an, it's an issue. So this is one idea. 
Um, we're looking at a variety of ideas as, as a coalition to see um, what, what may help to alleviate, even in a small part, some of the congestion on the roads. Through you, Madam Moderator, I have a second part to my question. Is why on earth don't we use the MBTA? Don't we fund the MBTA through the cherry sheet right now? And we have probably one or two buses going through the square. And why don't we approach the MBTA to provide that shuttle service? Mr. Chairman? We've asked. Um, you know, the, the, the MBTA in large part operates buses that are convenient routes, not necessarily uh, where the people are and need to go. This is an ongoing dialogue that you know, we're not unique. I think Danvers is one of many communities that struggles with trying to negotiate um, you know, appropriate service from the T. Uh, we've proposed at the coalition level uh, perhaps that the MBTA ought to be offering some sort of pilot grant program where we could experiment in ways just like this. Uh, you know, a, a, small, a small sum of money at the local level would be a rounding error in some of their major projects. So it's, it's an ongoing dialogue that we have on an annual basis with the MBTA. So, Thank you. So, Madam Moderator, I believe that what I'm hearing is that we have MBTA service in the town of Danvers. And we pay for that, I don't know, a couple of million dollars a year or something like that to uh, the MBTA. And now we're implementing a private service, basically, for a certain area of town. And, and that, that's a rhetorical question. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Betancourt. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Rick Betancourt, Precinct 5. Just a quick question. So we're going to have individuals come into Beverly Depot. So Danvers residents aren't going to be driving there. And then they're going to get a shuttle to the Cherry Hill to work and then go back to Beverly Depot. 15000 not it's not a lot compared to our budget, but it could have went someplace else. Why didn't we ask the businesses to pay the $15,000 to write the grant or to actually do the exploratory piece of it? Why did we have to shell out 15000 for a grant that's going to benefit them? I'm just curious. Mr. Chairman? So the, the, the businesses will be contributing significantly more than the city or the town. Well, I know that. And, um, you know, when, when we work, we apply for this grant through the uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council, which represents, uh, the, you know, the North Shore communities. Um, the, the short answer is, you know, the, the traffic and congestion is an mm -hmm. issue that plagues our community. And this is, a, this is a way that we can support that effort. Um, and again, you know, over the two years, the, the $15,000 per year from the town and the $25,000 per year from the city will be, um, a very small portion of the overall operating cost for the service. I, I just think it was very generous. I just think the business is probably going to shell out the money. But thank you very much for the answer. I appreciate it. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, Jack Parker, Precinct 4. I just want to understand it. Cherry Hill, that's a, that, that is in Danvers. So these businesses that we're helping get people to are Danvers businesses paying Danvers taxes. <clears throat> the businesses in Cherry Hill are partially in Beverly and partially in Danvers. It, it's a horseshoe-shaped environment, Correct. and half of them are in each the city and half in the town. So we're not just helping people from Beverly. We're helping businesses in Danvers who pay taxes in Danvers. Is That's accurate. We're also helping relieve the pressure of extra traffic on those roadways. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Yes. Hi, Savannah Alden from Precinct 2. I am a Danvers re resident, obviously, but I work in the city, and I take the train from Beverly Depot every single day. Um, and I think this is a great idea for the traffic easement because of the amount of time it takes me to get there and the amount of time that I spend on the MBTA. It took me an extra 20 minutes to get here today because of that um, situation. So I'm, I'm very much in favor of this. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Article 20, maintenance dredging. To see what some the town will vote to appropriate to the cost of future maintenance dredging, including engineering and permitting for the Danvers Harbor, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $20,634, $1,000 from free cash, 
$19,634 from prior year savings, dredging of Crane Porter Rivers, Article 43 of the May 21st, 2007 town meeting, toward the cost of future maintenance dredging, including engineering and permitting for Danvers Harbor. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 21, Crane River Bank Stabilization. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate toward Crane River Shoreline Stabilization or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $42,000 from free cash toward Crane River Shoreline Stabilization. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Here, oh, this is Daly. I have a cast on my foot. It takes me a lot, a little bit of time. Sorry. Well, we just voted for Article 20 for maintenance dredging, and to appropriate money to dredge the Crane River and other rivers in the future. When you dredge the harbor, particularly in the area of Crane River, you're taking dirt out. And nature doesn't like a void. And so that land is eroding from the bank of the town marina. And that mud is going to fill in the hole. We're now voting on Article 21 to stabilize that bank. And I spoke before the River Committee three years ago. This is not enough money. We've spent money in the past to try to stabilize that bank by putting in vegetation. You can put in vegetation when you have a marshland. You cannot do it on a bank that is already unstable. And it's time that the town makes a commitment to put something in place and not have another study to put something in place to hold that bank back because it's eroding the land for the town marina. And also, each year that I look out across that area, that bank is going five feet minimum. And pretty soon it's going to be taking over the John L. George Park itself. And I think we ought to get serious about this and if other towns can put in fabricated boards made out of plastic, I believe it's Palmer Cove Yacht Club, I could be wrong, if they can put it in with the state's approval, we can also. So I urge you to vote for this Article 21. I don't know what they're going to be spending the money on, and I hope it's not another study to see if plants will hold back a banking. I think we better get serious about this. Thank you very much for your attention. Please support this article and any other articles that come before this town meeting body to make a difference in this river. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 22, Emergency Action Plans and Safety Inspection for Mill and Meadow Dams. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate to prepare emergency action plans and to continue to conduct dam safety and compliance inspections for the Meadow Dam off Hobart Street and the Mill Pond Dam, dam on Sylvan Street. And to determine whether the funds shall be appropriated through sewer receipts, sewer retained earnings, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $10,000 from sewer retained earnings to prepare an emergency to prepare emergency action plans and to continue to conduct dam safety and compliance inspections for the Meadow Dam and the Mill Pond Dam. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor please say aye. aye. Any opposed? 
The motion carries. The chair declares a brief recess of 10 minutes.
Uh, we're now on page 10, Article 23, Water Main Replacement Program, to see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the capital maintenance and extraordinary repairs to the town's water distribution system for design, permitting, and construction of water mains, and to determine whether said appropriation shall be made through water receipts, water retained earnings, borrowing, or otherwise, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $10 million by borrowing. $2 million annually over the next five years to be paid for through water receipts for capital maintenance and extraordinary repairs to the town's water distribution system. Thank you. Is there any discussion? This requires a two-thirds vote because we are voting to borrow money. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 24, Wastewater Facilities Improvement. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the capital maintenance and extraordinary repairs to the town's wa wastewater pumping stations and to determine whether said appropriation shall be made through water receipts, wa sewer, I'm sorry, sewer receipts, sewer retained earnings or otherwise or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $76,000 from sewer retained earnings for capital maintenance and extraordinary repairs to the town's wastewater pumping stations. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 25, Wastewater Facilities Improvement. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the capital maintenance and extraordinary repairs to the town's wastewater pumping stations at 104 Andover Street, McCushion Lane, and North Street, and to determine whether said appropriation shall be made through sewer receipts, sewer retained earnings, or otherwise, or take any other actions thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $200,000 from sewer retained earnings for capital maintenance and extraordinary repairs to the town's wastewater pumping stations at 104 Andover Street, McCushion Lane, and North Street. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 26, drainage improvements, frost, fish, brook cleaning, and bank stabilization. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the design, permitting, construction, and services during construction necessary for drainage improvements in the frost, fish, brook, and to determine whether this appropriation shall be raised through sewer receipts or borrowing or otherwise, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $1.35 million in borrowing to be repaid from sewer receipts for design, permitting, construction, and services during construction necessary for drainage improvements in Frost Fish Brook. Thank you. Is there any discussion? This requires a two-thirds vote as we are voting to borrow money. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 27, West Street Force Main Replacement. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the design, permitting, construction, and services during construction to make extraordinary repairs to the West Street Sewer Pumping Station, Force Main, within the town's wastewater collection system, and to determine whether said appropriation shall be made through sewer receipts or sewer retained earnings or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $113,000 from sewer retained earnings appropriate for design, permitting, construction, and services during construction to make extraordinary repairs to the West Street Sewer Pumping Station, Force Main, within the town's wastewater collection system. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 28, Water System Improvements. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for design, permitting, construction, and services during the construction for upgrades to the existing water distribution storage and supply network within the town's water distribution system, and to determine whether said appropriation shall be made through water retained earnings or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $205,000 from water retained earnings for design, permitting, construction, and services during construction for upgrades to the existing water distribution storage and supply network within the town's water distribution system. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 29, water treatment plant carbon filter repairs. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the repair of carbon filters at the water treatment plant and to determine whether said appropriation shall be made through water retained earnings, 
or take any other actions thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $600,000 from water retained earnings for the repair of carbon filters at the water treatment plant. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Alan McCarrison, Precinct 7. Uh, with the water reports that we've received lately, uh, it's mentioning lead in our waters. Will this take care of the lead in our waters? Thank you. Mr. Chairman. I defer to the, um, town manager. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Madam Moderator. Uh, the, the carbon filters do not specifically uh, address the lead. There are other uh, apparatuses in the treatment plant that are specifically designed to address the lead in the water system. This is part of the treatment process as it comes out of the pond and through the plant. This is one of the steps involved with treating it uh, into finished water. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 30, water, uh, public water supply source exploration. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the, a study and development of a new public groundwater supply source for the town's water distribution system and to determine whether said appropriation shall be made through water receipts, water retained earnings, or otherwise, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $35,000 from WMP fees to study geological conditions and conduct exploratory testing related to development of a potential new public groundwater supply source for the town's water distribution system. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 31, Highland School Roof Replacement. To see if the town will vote to appropriate, borrow, or transfer from available funds an amount of money in addition to the amount of $1,600,000 appropriated and authorized to be borrowed under the vote of town past May 21st, 2018, Article 25, to be expended under the direction of the town manager for the repair and replacement of the roof at Highland School, 190 Hobart Street, Danvers, Mass., which proposed repair project would material ex material ex materially extend the useful life of the school and preserve an asset that otherwise is capable of supporting the required educational program for which the town may be eligible for a school construction grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, MSBA. The town acknowledges that the MSBA's grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA and any project cost the town incurs in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the town. Any grant that the town may receive from the MSBA for the project shall not exceed the lesser of 1, 50, and 58 hundredths percent of eligible approved co project costs as determined by the MSBA or two, the total maximum grant amount as determined by the MSBA or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town of Danvers appropriate the amount of $1,644,746 in addition to the amount of $1.6 million appropriated and authorized to be borrowed under the vote of the town past May 21st, 2018, Article 25, for the repair and replacement of the roof at the Highland School, 190 Hobart Street, Danvers, Mass., including the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto. Which proposed repair project would materially extend the useful life of the school and preserve an asset that otherwise is capable of supporting the required educational program and for which the town may be eligible for a grant from the MSBA, set amount to be expended under the direction of the town manager. To meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under Mass General Law Chapter 44 or pursuant to any other enabling authority. The town acknowledges that the MSBA's grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA and any project cost the town incurs in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the town, provided further that any grant that the town may receive from the MSBA for the project shall not exceed the lesser of 50.58% of eligible approved project costs as determined by the MSBA or the total maximum grant amount determined by the MSBA, and that the amount of borrowing authorized pursuant to this vote shall be reduced by any grant amount set forth in the project funding agreement that may be executed between the town and the MSBA. 
any premium received by the, the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote less any premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing by a like amount the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any discussion? Mr. Betancourt. <coughs> Uh, Rick Benton, Court Precinct 5, just a couple quick questions. So if I'm reading this correctly, we were off on our original assessment back in May of 2018 by $1.64 million as far as the estimated repair costs for the roof. Is that correct? Because if we, we add these two up, it totals $3.24 million. Is that correct? Okay. Okay, sure. So this, this was discussed at length by the board and the, and the finance committee. Um, and, and essentially once we, we had... A, Town meeting had appropriated or authorized up to $1.6 million to do this project last year. Uh, the assumption at that point was that we would simply be replacing the rubber membrane roof. Once the MSBA assigned an owner's project manager to the project and they started to do some structural analysis of the substrate on the roof, they found sections of the roof at Highlands were original to the school when it was built in the 1950s um, and not replaced when the school was renovated, I believe, in the early 1990s. So the project was stopped at that point. Uh, the, the town pers uh, pursued approval from the MSBA to complete a larger project, and they did vote to support uh, doing structural repairs along with the roof. Um, so the, the recommend the the, uh, the assessment going in was 3.2. Um, we did open bids last week on this project, and it appears that uh, the project will be completed uh, just under $3 million. So neither the town nor the MSBA will need to expend its full authorization on the project. Um, but it was a different project last year. So it was a change of circumstance because of inf investigative work into the ceiling, the well, roof the, itself, the correct? Question, right? uh, but, hold on. The question is not directed to the town manager. All the questions come through me, Mr. Betancourt. So this is not a give and take with the town manager. So if you have another question, let's Yes, take I got another question, question Madam Moderator. I apologize. Okay. Um, what happens in the event that we are, don't qualify or we're not eligible for the actual state uh, the MSBA and where would the funds come for that? Mr. Chairman. I have heard of the town Thank you. The, the MSBA has already approved the project. It's already approved? Okay. Correct. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. There were any further discussion? This requires a two-thirds vote because the vote authorizes borrowing. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 32, building improvements. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for repairs, maintenance, and improvements to town buildings, including equipment, and determine whether this appropriation should be raised by borrowing or otherwise, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town appropriate $212,300, $125,000 dollars from free cash, $12,500 dollars from electric, $2,500 from water retained earnings, $2,500 from sewer retained earnings, and $69,800 from prior year savings building, and building improvement articles for the repair and maintenance of town buildings. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 33, grounds improvement. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for improvements to and maintenance of town properties, athletic facilities, playgrounds and equipment, and related costs, including construction, reconstruction, replacement, or purchase of equipment or supplies, and to determine whether this appropriation should be raised by borrowing or otherwise, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town appropriate $165,800, $100,000 from free cash, $40,500 from the one revolving, revolving account, and $25,300 from prior year savings, grounds improvement articles for improvements to town parks and properties. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 34, drainage maintenance. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate for the, con uh, for the continuation of the drainage maintenance program, including engineering, specifications, and bidding documents, materials, equipment, and construction associated with the cost of upgrading and improving the existing drainage throughout the town, and to determine whether this, whether this appropriation should be raised by borrowing or otherwise, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate 
$28,300 from sewer receipts for the continuation of the drainage maintenance program, including engineering, specifications, and bidding documents, materials, equipment, and construction associated with the costs of upgrading and improving the existing drainage throughout the town. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 35, drainage liability. To see if the town will vote to assume liability in the manner provided by Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 91, Section 29, for damages that may be incurred by work to be performed by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for the improvement, development, maintenance, and protection of tidal and non-tidal rivers and streams, harbors, tidewaters, foreshores, and shores along the public beach, in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 91, Section 11, and authorize the Board of Selectmen to execute and deliver a bond of indemnity, therefore, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to assume liability in the manner provided by Mass General Law, Chapter 91, Section 29, for damages that may be incurred by work performed by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for the improvements, development, maintenance, and protection of tidal and non-tidal rivers and streams, harbors, tidewaters, foreshores, and shores along pu the public beach in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 91, Section 11, and authorize the Board of Select Selectmen to execute and deliver a bond of indemnity, therefore, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Article 36, reestablishment of a revolving fund accounts to see if the town will vote to reestablish departmental revolving fund accounts pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half under the custody of the town treasurer or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to reestablish departmental revolving fund accounts pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half under the custody of the town treasurer as follows. Fire Trailer, $5,000. Danvers Council on Aging Programming, $215,000. Transportation, $150,000. Waterways Dredging Improvement, $65,000. Child Care Program, $640,000. Local Emergency Management, $10,000. Water Use Mitigation, $450,000. Preservation, $100,000. And Police Canine Program, $20,000. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 37, School Construction Stabilization Fund. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate to add to the School Construction Stabilization Fund pursuant to the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $750,000 from free cash to add to the school construction stabilization fund pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Mr. Zubrick. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Mark Zubrick, Precinct 7. i got to remember that. Uh, what I wanted to do, and I don't know if I can or not, I'd like to amend this uh, motion, uh, amend this article, to read that we devote another half a million dollars to the school stabilization fund, but take the money out of the stabilization fund in Article 38. So I'm not sure whether it's possible, but I uh, wonder if maybe we can interchange the articles and have the money saved there and put it into uh, the school stabilization fund. The reason I'm asking... Okay, wait. So let me just talk a little bit about procedure. Okay. Um, we, I understand what you want to do is flip the money um, to increase the school construction stabilization fund is beyond the scope of the warrant article. And I'm going to ask town council, can, can you follow me with this? With the way, uh, with the appropriate way to do that, would that be to, for Mr. Zubrick to make a motion to take Article 38 out of order and reduce Article 38 first? Yes, Madam Moderator, members of the meeting. Uh, it would be, uh, I think, appropriate to, to take it out of order, if that uh, um, uh, is your preference, 
uh, in order to um, uh, make that money available for the town meeting vote. Otherwise, uh, I'm afraid it is beyond the scope as it presently appears. Thank you very much. Thank so you. So I will entertain from you, if you wish, Mr. Zubrick, to make a motion to take Article 38 <clears throat> out of order. Please, uh, if, if I may, I'd like to propose that we take Article 38 out of order and before we vote on 37. Okay. So, um, so let's make sure we have a second. Is there a second? Okay, so there's a second. So that folks understand, if pursuant to the procedure announced at the beginning of town meeting, the town meeting may vote to take an, uh, art, an, an article out of order. So, Mr. Zubrick is proposing that we take up Article 38 prior to taking up Article 37. Thank you, Madam Moderator. So, that needs to pass by a majority vote. So, let's do that first. Okay? Right. All those in favor of taking Article 38 out of order and voting on Article 38 now, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The article passes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, town meeting. The reason I'm asking for this so, is... So just to, let me interrupt you. So we're discussing Article 38, 38 right now. Okay? Correct. What I'm proposing on Article 38... Oh, thank you very... I'm, I'm ahead of myself now. Okay, so we'll do Article 38, Stabilization Fund, to see what sum the town will vote to appropriate to add to the stabilization fund pursuant to the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, or take any other action thereon. And I'll take the recommendation from the Finance Committee Chair. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $1.5 million from free cash to add to the stabilization fund pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B. Okay. Is there any discussion? Mr. Zubrick. Thank you, Madam Moderator. And uh, the reason I'm asking for the amendment to the article. Time out. you got to state what the amendment is. That's what I just handed you. Uh, but we need you to I, tell us. I will tell you right and now. And then we'll get a second on that. Now, the, what I'd like to do is, on Article 38, make an amendment to reduce the $1.5 million amount down to $1 million. Is there a second? You may proceed. Thank you, Madam Moderator. <coughs> the reason I'm asking for this is because we have been, over the last year, frantically discussing the funding for the uh, Smith School. At that time, there were all kinds of uh, motions made that we're going to go for a, a debt exclusion, two and a half override, or whatever. We don't need to do that. We have a fund that uh, this, uh, the con uh, school construction stabilization fund, which was established back in 1999 or 2000. We were both on the board at that time. Emory Todd made sure that that happened. And that has served us very well. So what I would like to do is add, reduce this $1.5 million stabilization fund and shift that money into the school building construction stabilization fund to prevent any approaching debt exclusion or funding mechanism that we will you know, impose on, on the taxpayers. We have these funds available to offset the peaks and valleys of our funding mechanism for the Smith School. And this is one way of adding half a million dollars to Article 37. But first we have to do is reduce the amount that is being proposed from one and a half million dollars down to a million dollars. All I'm doing is asking you to shift half a million dollars into the school stabilization fund by reducing this article. So it's, it's a method of, it's the same amount at the end, it's just that it's in a different bucket and it's meant to be for the schools 
instead of any debt service that we incur. So I would, suggest, I would ask that the town meeting vote to approve this change and then we can move forward uh, with the school stabilization uh, account in Article 37. Thank okay. you. Is there any discussion, further discussion, on Mr. Zubrick's motion to reduce Article 38 by $500,000? <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I understand the sentiment, um, and it's not as simple as shifting one bucket to another bucket. It does have some unintended consequences if this is, if the fullness of Mr. Zubrick's uh, motions are carried through. As we come into tonight, we have unfunded balance of just about $8.8 .8 million. The numbers I'm giving you are, extreme, are rough, but uh, enough for this discussion. The warrant articles tonight will consume uh, roughly $2.544 million out of free cash, which is a component of the unfunded uh, ba balance, leaving us with a balance of approximately 6.01% of the town budget. The unfunded uh, uh, budget, the unfunded balance is a fund that serves to stabilize operations against turbulent fiscal, economic, and environmental impacts. It provides a funding source uh, for critical capital needs in the year when inadequate free cash is available. By reducing, by following through with Mr. Zubrick's motion, motions, this one and then the one he's uh, going to propose after, what we're doing is we've dropped that percentage down to 6%, 6.01. We have a standing policy to maintain an average of 8 to 12%. We will have to use the net, this article to bring the stabilization fee up to that amount. This is a critical component of our credit rating. And when Standard & Poor's comes in, if we have to, if we do not meet that 8 to 12 percent, which we've set as a uh, precedent, as a, as a policy, as a town, they will question our ability to uh, respond in the event of an emergency. So um, I would speak against this uh, on behalf of the, uh, 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 based on uh, town administration's numbers that they presented, and uh, suggest that the unintended consequence, while the, the, the um, sentiment is sound, it actually isn't just moving it from one bucket to another. It has a detrimental effect, potentially, to our credit rating. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further discussion? I thought I saw a hand in the back. Sir. <clears throat> Mr. Almeida. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I just had a question about the nature of the stabilization fund versus the school construction stabilization fund. Could funds from the stabilization fund be used in school capital projects as well, or is that off limits? Mr. Chairman. I'm going to turn to the town manager about the mechanics of those funds. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, so the, the, the school construction stabilization fund is considered an assigned fund balance, and, and, and why that's important is that it's not calculated as part of our unassigned fund balance, which is the policy that the chairman was referring to. Uh, so each year we need to have an unassigned fund balance uh, of between 8 and 12 percent of our net operating revenue to be in compliance uh, with, with the adopted policy, which, which has been, uh, you know, we've been in compliance since it was adopted in 2016. The general stabilization fund is calculated as part of that unassigned fund balance. So any money that's moved from free cash into the general stabilization fund is still counted toward our policy. When, mo when monies are moved into the school stabilization fund, they become part of the assigned fund balance, which is used for things like funding uh, school projects. But by moving it out of the, assigned, the unassigned category, we bring down uh, our reserves by a like amount. And, I, and that's what the chairman is referring to. So that you can, the, the mechanism is the same to access both the school stabilization fund and the general stabilization fund. The general stabilization fund is less restrictive, so you certainly could use that for uh, offsetting debt service. Um, but by identifying a particular use from the audit perspective, it moves it out of the unassigned fund balance and into the assigned fund balance. So, so as I understood Mr. Almeida's question, if we wanted to use money from this general stabilization fund to fund a school project, we could do so? Is that, is that correct? correct? Town meeting would have the authority to appropriate to out appropriate of that. To appropriate the money. Account. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Well, you know, before I get back to you, let me take the, everyone else. Hi. 
Uh, Paul McNulty, Precinct 2, and it's actually more a comment than a discussion, which is I appreciate the intention, I think, Mr. Zubrick's comments. Um, but I have to say, I'm, I'm not knowledgeable enough. I just worry about a change where we've been through the Finance Committee reviews, they've come to these conclusions. I just feel odd, off to me to be asked to make this kind of decision kind of late in the game. So personally, I will not support the, uh, the motion, if I've understood, if I use the right terms. But mainly, not the intention of the motion, but mainly because it seems late in the game after there's been a pretty thorough review uh, through the Finance Committee and others. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Mr. Zubrick. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I just know that the funds that have been allocated to the School Stabilization Fund are dedicated for the debt service of the schools that we have just passed in February. We have been indicating that somehow we can't afford it at some times. Now we have it under our budget, within our budget. But for how long? What I'm trying to identify is that the, these funds are free cash funds. These are the leftovers from the budgets that I've talked about in the beginning that have been bloated, and the money is being saved for a purpose. So it's basically a savings account for the purpose of offsetting any peaks and valleys for the Smith School, just like we did for the uh, high school and, and the other grammar schools. So I would urge that we do reduce this amount to a million dollars, it's still a million dollars, and assign the other $500,000 into the school stabilization. I think it's the prudent move before we get into a discussion of a override or a debt exclusion, and I, I just don't want that to happen. So I urge you to vote to make this change. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on Mr. Zubrick's motion? Let's now turn to voting on Mr. Zubrick's motion. And that motion is on Article 38 to reduce the appropriation to $1 million for the Stabilization Fund. All those in favor of Mr. Zubrick's motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion does not carry. We now turn to voting Article 38 as proposed the recommendation of the Finance Committee. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of the Finance Committee recommendation on Article 38, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. We now turn back to Article 37, the School Construction Stabilization Fund. To see what sum the town will vote to appropriate to add to the School Construction Stabilization Fund pursuant to the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $750,000 from free cash to add to the School Construction Stabilization Fund pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B. Is there any discussion? Mr. Zubrick. In light of what just happened, you rejected the idea of moving a half a million dollars into that account. I still make my amendments to increase that account by half a million dollars. That, that mo and that motion is, is, is out of order um, it, it, because it goes beyond the scope of the warrant article, and I had town council speak to that, which is why we took 38. First. I understand that, but I'm, I, I'm still very concerned about the school stabilization account that we have been using for 20 years, and now all of a sudden it's not practical to transfer funds from stabilization to school stabilization. It's, it's the same money, it's still green. So that's, that's my point, and I, if, 
if you're not going to allow me to make that amendment, then I will vote no. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The motion carries. Article 39, Article 39, OPEB Trust Fund, to see what sum the town will vote to appropriate to add to the post-employment health insurance stabilization fund pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40, Section 5B, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to appropriate $350,000 from free cash to add to the post-employment health insurance stabilization fund pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 5B. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Article 40, rescission of authorized unissued borrowing amounts. To see what send the town will vote to rescind certain authorized but unissued borrowing amounts that are no longer needed to complete the projects for which they were originally approved or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend that the town vote to rescind certain authorized but unissued borrowing amounts that are no longer needed to complete the projects for which they were orig originally approved as follows. The May 16th, 2016 Special Town Meeting, Article 4, Public Safety Dispatch Center, $200,000. The May 19th, 2008 Annual Town Meeting, Article 37, Collins Street Water Main Replacement, $1.51 million. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Before moving on to our last article of the evening, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to thank our public works divisions, particularly Ramon Batista and Sean Powers, um, who uh, do set up the room and um, help us be comfortable throughout the evening. So thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> I would also like to thank the unsung heroes uh, of the, of the um, town meeting, the Finance Committee, um, and particularly welcome Ted Blake, our newest member of the FinCom. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the Finance Committee, for your fine work. We will now turn to Article 41, Fiscal 2020 Budget Amendments, to see if the town will vote to amend the action taken under Article 2 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting by increasing certain appropriations, by adding certain appropriations, or by reducing certain appropriations, by transfer among accounts or from available funds, or take any other action thereon. Mr. Chairman. We recommend no action. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Could I have a motion to dissolve the annual town meeting? Is there a second? All those in favor of dissolution, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? Thank you very much. Have a good evening.